Hey guys, sorry about that. Um, we're picking up <laughs> where we just ended um, two seconds ago, which was Mark 14, verse 13. So Jesus sent two of them into Jerusalem with these instructions. As you go into the city, a man carrying a pitcher of water will meet you. Follow him. At the house he enters, say to the owner, the teacher asks, where is my guest? Where is the guest room where I can eat the Passover meal with my disciples? He will take you upstairs to a large room that is already set up. That is where you should prepare a meal. So the two disciples went into the city and found everything just as Jesus had said, and they prepared the Passover meal there. In the evening, Jesus arrived with twelve. As they were at the table eating, Jesus said, I tell you the truth. One of you eating with me here will betray me. Gently distressed, each one of them asked in turn, Am I the one? He replied, It is one of you twelve who is eating from this bowl with me. For the Son of Man must die as the scriptures declared long ago. But how terrible it will be for the one who betrays him. It would be far better for that man if he had never been born. As they were eating, Jesus took some bread and blessed it. <clears throat> then he broke it in pieces and gave it to the disciples, saying, Take it, for this is my body. And he took a cup of wine and gave thanks to God for it. Gave thanks, as we were just talking about giving thanks every day to God, not just on Thanksgiving. Sorry. He gave it to them, and they, um, they all drank from it. And he said to them, this is my blood, which confirms the covenant between God and his people. It is poured out as a sacrifice for many. I tell you the truth. I will not drink wine again until the day I drink it in the new kingdom of God. Then they sang a hymn and went out to the Mount of Olives. On the way, Jesus told them, all of you will desert me. For the scripture says, God will strike the shepherd and the, shepherd, and the sheep will be scattered. But after I am raised from the dead, I will go ahead of you to Galilee and meet you there. Peter said to him, Even if everyone deserts you, I never will. Jesus replied, I tell you the truth, Peter. This very night before the rooster crows twice, you will deny me three times. You, that you even knew me. No, Peter declared empathetically, even if I have to die with you, I will never deny you. And all the others vowed the same. They went to the olive grove called Gethsemane, and Jesus said, Sit here while I go and pray. He took Peter, James, and John with him, and he became deeply troubled and distressed. He told them, My soul is crushed with grief to the point of death. Stay here and keep watch with me. He went on a little farther and fell to the ground. He prayed that if it were possible, the awful hour awaiting him might pass him by. Abba, Father, he cried out, everything is possible for you. Please take this cup of suffering away from me. Yet I want your will to be done, not mine. Then he returned and found the disciples asleep. He said to Peter, Simon, are you asleep? Couldn't you watch with me even one hour? Keep watch and pray so that you will not give in to temptation, for the spirit is willing, but the body is weak. Then Jesus left them again and prayed the same prayer as before. When he returned to them again, he found they were sleeping, for they couldn't keep their eyes open and they didn't know what to say. When he returned to them the third time, he said, Go ahead and sleep. Have your rest. But know this time has come. The Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Up, let's be going. Look, my betrayer is here. And immediately, even as Jesus said this, Judas, one of the twelve disciples, arrived with a crowd of men armed with swords and clubs. They had been sent by the leading priests, the teachers of religious law, and the elders. The traitor, Judas, had given them a prearranged signal. You will know which one, one to arrest when I greet him with a kiss. Then you can take him away under guard. As soon as they arrived, Judas walked up to Jesus. Rabbi, he exclaimed, and gave him a kiss. Then the others grabbed Jesus and arrested him. But one of the man, men with Jesus pulled out his sword and struck the high priest's slave, slashing off his ear. Jesus asked them, 
Am I some dangerous revolutionary that you come with swords and clubs to arrest me? Why didn't you arrest me in the temple? I was there among you teaching every day, but these things are happening to fulfill what the scriptures say about me. Then all the disciples deserted him, deserted him and ran away. One young man following behind was clothed only in a long linen shirt. When the mob tried to grab him, he slipped out of his shirt and ran away naked. They took Jesus to the high priest's home where the leading priests, the elders, and the teachers of religious law had gathered. Meanwhile, Peter followed him a long distance and went right followed him at a distance and went right into the high priest's courtyard. There he sat with the guards, warming himself by the fire. Inside, the leading priests and the entire high council were trying to find evidence against Jesus so they could put him to death, but they couldn't find any. Many false witnesses spoke against him, but they contradicted each other. Finally, some men stood up and gave this false testimony. We heard him say, I will destroy the temple made with human hands in three days. I will build another made without human hands. But even then, they didn't get their story straight. Then the high priest stood up before the others and asked Jesus, Well, aren't you going to answer these charges? What do you have to say to, for yourself? But Jesus was silent and made no reply. Then the high priest asked him, Are you the Messiah, the Son of the Blessed One? Jesus said, I am. And you will see the Son of Man seated in the place of power at God's right hand and coming on the clouds of heaven. Then the high priest tore his clothing to show his horror and said, Why do we need other witnesses? You have all heard his blasphemy. What is your verdict? Guilty, they cried. He deserves to die. Then some of them began to spit at him. They blindfolded him and they beat him with their fists. Prophesy to us, they jeered. And the guards slapped him as they took him away. Meanwhile, Peter was in the courtyard below. One of the servant girls who worked for the high priest came by and noticed Peter, Peter warming himself at the fire. She looked at him closely and said, You were the one of those with Jesus of Nazareth. But Peter denied it. I don't know what you're talking about, he said. And he went out into the entryway. Just then a rooster crowed. When the servant girl saw him standing there, she began, began to tell others, this man is definitely one of them, but Peter denied it again. A little later, some of the other bystanders confronted Peter and said, you must be one of them because you are Galilean. Peter swore, a curse on me if I'm lying. I don't know this man you're talking about. And immediately the rooster crowed the second time. Suddenly, Jesus's words flashed through Peter's mind. Before the rooster crows twice, you will deny me three times that you even knew me. And he broke down and wept. And that is the end of chapter 14. Um, hang on one second, Mala. My daughter is knocking. Um, I just want to go back to the point where Judas came and betrayed Jesus with a kiss. Um, and all these people... And Jesus is like, am I some dangerous revolutionary that you come with, like, clubs and a mob, basically? Nala, please hang on one second. Go to Dada. That you come with a mob and clubs and all this craziness to arrest me. Why didn't you arrest me when I was sitting down preaching? Like, you're coming... You think you're catching me off guard and you're coming with all this craziness to arrest me, the peacemaker. Um, and I just find it funny that he uses the word revolutionary because um, what we're going to read tomorrow is the fact that there's this... Um, there's something they do this practice they have every year um where they get to release one person out of prison it's like something they do right 
a four Passover, I believe. We'll read it. Yeah, it's right before pa or during Passover. And again, we're going to read this tomorrow. So it's something they do to, I guess, feel good about themselves. I guess the same way people give extra gifts and extra cheer and hold the door open a little longer during Christmas and Thanksgiving time. Um, during Passover, these people let one prisoner go and it can be anyone that the people decide. And they let go someone called um, Barabbas. And Barabbas is a dangerous revolutionary. And so I think it's really funny. I never noticed this before. That Jesus says, am I some dangerous revolutionary? Um, that you come at me like this. And um, spoiler alert. Tomorrow, when they get the chance to release either Jesus or Barabbas, guess who they pick? Um, they choose to release a dangerous revolutionary um, and to let him walk among their children, let him walk among themselves, let him go prance around like he has no consequences. He just gets out scot-free and can do all this craziness again. Um, but Jesus, a peacemaker, they choose to crucify. So I just think it's really funny because God is all knowing. So he obviously knew these people were coming with clubs. He knew exactly what hour they were coming. He knew that they were going to release the dangerous revolutionary over himself. And so the fact that he used that term specifically and that doesn't make you, like, when you're reading through the Bible, there's no way that, like, there's, I don't understand how people can't believe in Jesus and in God, um, who are the same when they're reading, because there's so much connection. Nobody could have wrote this besides God himself. These are, this is God himself, and we're going to end it there, um, Jesus knows before it happens. God knows exactly what's happening in your life before it happens. And he will give you warnings and he will give you a little bit of insight. But you have to choose to um, to purify yourself, to pray, to read his word so that you can hear him when he speaks, so that you're connected, so that when the Holy Spirit says, listen, not that, or... <laughs> Or like Jesus said, some dangerous revolutionary. That should have convicted those people right on the spot to put to be like, I'm so sorry, Jesus, forgive us. They should have fell to their knees right then and there because they knew that they had a dangerous revolutionary locked up. And they knew that Jesus wasn't it. And they knew that all the charges against Jesus were false. You got to um, read your word, pray daily, and ask God to speak to you in a way that you can hear him clearly and um, trust that you're going to hear God clearly so that when he's speaking to you, when he's giving you insight, when he's guiding you, when he's wa he's literally walking with you, you can feel him, you can see him, you can hear him um, because God already knows what's going to happen and then he's trying to guide you into how to maneuver the situations that you're going to go through because they're not going to be roses. Some of them are going to be flower fields but some of them are gonna be very painful and he's giving you um everything you need all the armor you need all the words you need to speak um he's uh he's so that your conversation is seasoned with salt when you speak to someone and you're not arguing with someone but you're always being the peacemaker he is giving you everything you need you just have to trust that you're gonna hear him properly um and pray that you're not someone who's just easily influenced into believing the masses because these people were ready, are literally arresting someone. Like you can scroll on my TikTok. I've done the trends, I've done the dances. I still will sometimes do the trends and the dances. Like I enjoy social media, but make sure that you are hooked up to God um, so that you know, so that you have discernment, so that you know, okay, 
everybody's doing this, but this is not right. Everybody's saying this, but this is not the truth. This is the truth. This is the truth. God's word is the truth. Not what you're saying. This is the truth. So you guys can keep doing that. I'm going to do this. I'm not going to do this trend because this is the truth and this what you're doing is contradicting this so i'm sorry i cannot participate um judas like went and betrayed god for a couple for 30 um i forget what it was in their terms but basically 30 dollars like he was like oh you got 30 i'm gonna kiss jesus and then you can take him and i'll get my money and get to do and you know the, like right after the like the devil is leaving him he tries to bring his money back and he's like I'm so sorry like I don't even want this money pay attention because you get one chance to make your decision one chance um so and yes God's a God of he will forgive you and give you another chance another chance but I'm saying in the moment you every day you make thousands of decisions in your head Make sure that you are reading your word so that the decisions you're making are um, in line with the kingdom and not in line with the devil. <laughs> and um, like I said, I'm guilty of it. I made decisions. Um, you can scroll. I got a blog. I've got social media for years. You can scroll and you could be like, oh, I know what, who was influencing her right there. And oh, I know when she got hooked up to God. You can look. Um, and it's better to be hooked on God so that when you're given the chance to make that decision, when someone dangles $30 in front of your face or $30 million, whatever it was worth to him, whatever it seemed like to Judas, you could be like, I don't need your money. My daddy is rich. My daddy will give me everything I need. My daddy is Jesus. Father, Abba, as Jesus said, Abba, this is what I need. This is what I'm facing. Please help me. Please guide me. I do not need anything from you. Keep your $30 million. Keep your billion dollars. Keep your $30. Keep your gas money. I will not betray my Lord for your cause because i have a bigger cause i have kingdom work to do um we're gonna end it there <laughs> bye